Hello and welcome, Sheriff here, and uh, I welcome you to another Decisions in the Making video. If you maybe wonder why I'm sounding a little bit differently, I'm recording this from a hotel room since I'm um, uh, basically on a trip for my work. So if this works, I will be able to do uh, some more commentated videos now and then. In the last couple of weeks and months, you noticed that I uploaded a lot of uncommented gameplay and uh, solo sorties and here and there there was a comment that uh, they were missing the analytical videos which I can understand I enjoy them uh, as well a little bit more but uh, I don't have the time and the energy to do them all the time but however I like them a lot so um, let's go with this one I guess you will see in the background footage from a sortie I was flying alone in the MiG-3 I think uh, it was time to bring it out again uh, for practice um, since the new tactical air war campaign was about to start it started now and um, the MiG-3 is a big part um, of the plane set there and um, to be good in the MiG-3 can be crucial to get a lot of um, kills on that server so I'm starting up here um, since my tutorial, my procedures in the MiG-3 changed a little bit, I'm um, closing the oil radiators a little bit more down. In the tutorial I said I close the radiators to 35% each. I guess I do now like 10 to 20 on the oil and um, yeah, the, um, 30 to 50 on the water depending what I'm doing right now. So, uh, But other than that, this is pretty standard. Um, since my tutorial, the flight model of pretty much all the planes got a little bit corrected and uh, the rudder of the MiG-3 is now uh, yeah, less mean to you. <laughs> it's a little bit more easy to take off. No, not a little bit easier. It's much easier to take off the MiG-3. It's still um, a challenge since still the tail wheel is um, getting unlocked if you push the rudder too hard. So you have to be careful with the rudder inputs, but other than that you can just take off like that. So uh, my plan for this sortie is basically to fly south a little bit and uh, to get altitude. I want to get uh, flying here on the Wings of Liberty server, so the action will, generally speaking, be very low. However, uh, volunteers like to fly on Wings of Liberty between yeah, 4 and 5k sometimes. No, maybe 3 to 4k. So I try to put my MiG on 4.5k roughly um, to be able to jump on volunteers. So that is the general plan and let's get going. After a couple of seconds, I just saw this uh, 109 on my 1 to 2 o'clock a little bit further, uh, roughly on my altitude, let's say, and uh, I decided to um, stalk him a little bit. By the way, I'm flying here with uh, 350 liters of fuel, a little bit less than um, maximum amount to make me a little bit lighter. Uh, other than that, I would have liked to choose uh, two 50 kind of machine guns like I always do. However, I think I misclicked or something since uh, I had only one 50 kill and uh, two machine guns uh, loaded, the default loadout, um, which I think cost me um, yeah, some good opportunities here and there. But it's still a good armament after all. So I'm diving on the guys. Uh, my MiG is at this point very locked up. Uh, what you see now while I roll over to the left, that this is pretty much my maximum roll rate here. So I stay more in the vertical here. I try to conserve as much energy by um, using a lot of space for maneuvers. So this loop here is as spacious as it can get. So I conserve energy. I try to posi position myself uh, above them all and try to get uh, this 109 here, which seems to be oblivious and looking to the right low. However, he sees me in the last moment and only managed to get one, I think it was a 50 cal hit on the left wing, he starts to leak. I use this opportunity uh, to look to my rear and I see multiple 109s there, and um, now all with their little pointy noses directly at me. and. Um, uh, since I was flying to the north and basically away from my uh, mates somewhere, uh, I decided to turn into them uh, to force them to turn to force them in the head on here. 
uh, why I do that I'll tell you later and I try to get from a good distance a few shots in um, a little bit actually for some only to impress them only to keep them busy and guessing, guessing and to show them that I'm very aggressive and uh, that I'm not here to joke around so I did this head on uh, since I was heading away from the mates as I said and um, I noticed that or I feared that those one lines were a force in this case and if a force can you run can run you down and when you then run away um, into enemy territory there's nothing which can you help you you just run away but they will catch you after all so I decided to turn around relatively sharply to force the head on and uh, to to force them to turn and to bleed speed to give me more time to reach my own lines here and this is what I'm doing right now I'm heading back home closing ready it does boosting away overheating my engine a little bit um, as I look back I see that um, I hit two guys first of course the guy I um, I dropped on first but then uh, I think I hit another one in a head on so I'm just running away basically now buying me time hoping that they will quit What I don't get here is why they chased me. Um, we had a cut here now. I think I at least cut two minutes from the footage here. Um, they basically were following me for like three to four minutes. Um, and both were leaking. And I thought both are leaking fuel. However, one of them is leaking coolant. And that is really something I completely don't understand why I would chase an enemy with a coolant leak. Since, um, yeah, I mean, one lines are planes with inland engines and as soon as they run out of uh, their uh, coolant it's over they just seize that's it um, with the 109 you have with the right settings maybe five to ten minutes or maybe 15 minutes if you're really lucky in only a small hole um, but it's as soon as you have a coolant leak it's time to head back but those guys were following me I was boosting away and uh, I noticed that I can easily extend away that gives me the hint that those are not F4s but those are F2s and after uh, they are then turning around since I guess they started to run out of fuel and out of coolant I could catch up key in this situation here is to stay patient while running away basically just to see to look at the enemy and see what he does um, in this case they were just following me and dropping further behind it was key to stay patient and uh, to wait until uh, my opp opportunity came and as soon as I turned around and uh, they ran out of options since no fuel and no coolant I had a good time to um, attack them again I was able to back one and the other one uh, was damaged, I tried to attack him as well, uh, he dove down. So far, uh, all my decisions I would personally consider as good ones. If you uh, disagree, feel free to leave a comment. Um, but this one here, uh, I don't like that much. Uh, I felt, I got here a little bit emotional, I have to say. Um, I, I wanted to, to shoot that one down, which chased me so long. Um, that maybe can't, doesn't come across here in the footage, since I cut a little bit of that chase there up there. But they were basically so persistent on my tail and they keep chasing me uh, and wait, keep wasting my time I have to say that I got a little bit angry and uh, this led me uh, into this situation here that I dove after that guy who was already chased by a maid and it's I think it was overall unnecessary to drop all the altitude in a MiG which is hard to get in a MiG and uh, to go off down here since especially it brought me right over an um, an objective here. It's from us, uh, from from the Russians. However, um, so low of an objective, never a good idea in a MiG. 
I tried to put some rounds into him from long range, but he is at this point too fast and it's a little bit hard to get him here. Uh, I get a friendly fire warning here. I guess I hit some of our own ground troops here. Uh, yeah, the commander won't be happy about that, I guess. So, uh, after a couple of shots, I came to my senses. I um, stopped shooting, I turned around and started to gather some altitude. As I did so, I see this Junkers 88 coming in. And um, he is just heading for our objectives. I keep looking around um, at least a little bit. I have to say, uh, while checking this video, I was a little bit astonished that I was not checking my six correctly. Maybe another not so good decision, if that is a decision. But to check your six a little bit more often is, is better. <laughs> it can cost your life. However, I try to get some deflection shots on this Jungus 88 off. And um, here you see that I hit his fuel tank, I think. Fuel tank, and uh, I saw later on in the mission report on the wings of the stats page that I killed at least one gun off him. Um, however, unfortunately, he got hit by a flak burst and went down. So I only can observe his fireball, sadly not my kill. But uh, this is the bit I wanted to show you. I will cut now to the next situation. Um, for the next couple of minutes, which I will cut, uh, it's basically just climbing back to altitude. And that really needs some time. The MiG, the MiG hasn't the best climbing performance. So we are back to altitude and uh, on a decent one. This time approaching the objectives from the north, um, since I was just closer to those. And while checking my 6 here, I notice a contact on my 7 o'clock. He's a little bit lower and traveling roughly in the same direction as I did. So I turn around and try to position myself above him. Checking my 6 again. Um, the flak around him and then finally his shape and revealed that it is a 1 and 9. I try to approach. I wanted to get his below his six, however, he is maneuvering and apparently is seeing me. I shoot a burst, got his engine, looking back, and then I see another one line approaching quickly. So I have to quickly pull it into a roll, um, put the big into a roll, uh, roll it out of the way, pushing some rudder, and uh, after a few turns, the enemy is off. However, he pushes. Uh, the one line into a dive. Um, I can turn into him again. I came, I was not dropping so low like he did, so I have a little bit of energy left to um, pull after him. Uh, I get a few shots off, but he does that very well. He's more or less pushing his nose down while he, after the zoom climb, and that makes hitting him quite hard. Since I see he has a lot of energy, or more energy left than I have, um, and I can't win this fight anymore, and I'm basically more in his realm of fighting. I decide to leave quickly as, as quickly as I can. I dive below this cloud to block uh, the view between him and me, so he can't chase me anymore, or at least has a hard time to chase me and to see me. And uh, yeah, I'm just extending away here. Um, yeah, again, I did not want to fight there, since he was on a little bit higher energy state than I am. Uh, the MiG is heavier than the 109, and uh, he could do there what he wanted with me. Um, so I don't want to play his game, I want to play my game. So I dive away and try to extend the fight in a more straight line, which is more suitable for a MiG. After being back to altitude again, and now running low on ammunition and on fuel, I decided to get maybe into one another engagement before I head back to the base and sure enough, uh, shortly after, I see another uh, fight there, this time a nice fireball and uh, I try to dive on this leaking one here, however I noticed that uh, I, s I see tracers flying there so I decide not to engage and to wait a little bit. Um, I notice now that I'm in the middle of a fireball and uh, that I don't want to be here very long. 
So I decide to pick one enemy and I try to pick one enemy which is singled out and is a danger for my mates and I try to get here a reflection shot off and only after I made the pass I see that I actually hit him uh, he will go down uh, like um, he will go down same uh, as the other Lika I shot there on high altitudes and this um, raises my uh, tele here to three shot down aircraft. So I check the furball again, I check uh, if there's anything else in the vicinity and uh, after seeing a parachute of my guy I uh, decide um, that it's now time to leave this here and to head back to base. And this is basically what you see here, you just see my landing approach. I'm cutting my throttle, I'm extending my flaps and I'm preparing myself for the landing. So, um, I'll leave you from there. If you like, you can watch the landing here. I personally like landing, so I generally uh, speaking, I let them in. Um, yeah, if you like, you can watch it. I hope you like this video, um, even with my little bit suppressed voice, because I can't speak so loudly here. There are other people around who like to sleep and stuff. Anyway, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.